What a difference a day makes weather-wise. Bright sunshine. We've still got wind. Um, and the guy I'm fishing with today uh, has taken us to a mark that I think is going to be sheltered from uh, from what he said. So, uh, yeah, it should be a little bit more comfortable conditions today. Um, coffee is flowing. But the third one of the day. Nice Japanese blend. It's uh, pretty potent. So, uh, yeah, I should have a bit of a zing in my step today. The dogs chilling out, sleeping. Gary and Darren have already left <coughs> to go and fish uh, where we fished yesterday. Um, yeah, great day yesterday, what can I say? I mean, Darren's 40 pounder, what a fish. Looked a lot bigger than uh, 40, especially when I was uh, helping him get up the rocks, but uh, yeah, what a place Anglesey is, I must admit. Beautiful place, a lot bigger than I imagined. I know that sounds a bit daft, but uh, geographically it's a lot bigger than I uh, and you look it looks on a map versus when you're actually on the island but uh stunning place beautiful waters um might try and do a little bit of filming en route to go and meet uh, today's guest but um what a place fantastic so uh let's get the coffee down my neck let's get on the road and let's go and meet uh harry today's guest and uh, see if we can get some uh, anglesey action see you shortly Okay, well we've arrived on the mark, uh, a 10-15 minute hike, it was bright sunshine when we uh, walked across and uh, trying to keep up with that lad, he's like a mountain goat, he's rapid across the march, I probably, probably see a whole flush, way too many layers on, bright sunshine and a bloody heavy box, but uh, we're here, um, his uh, prediction of the mark is spot on, the wind is generally over the top, we do get the occasional side gust, but nothing that's going to really stop us fishing. Uh, see plenty of movement in it so looking fishy um harry's just getting set up he's just wet his line because uh, he's got a multiplier on and uh, i know he's got a second rod with a fixed ball uh my first bait's gone out um i'm going for the huss he said it's a huss mark i love a huss so uh let's see if we can't get ourselves one the dog's knackered as if you can see her she's not impressed that was a bit of a trek um and she only got little legs bless her so uh yeah, let's get set up, let's get a drink, let's refuel and uh, we'll get into chatting with Harry and uh, find out all about the man behind the rod. Okay, we're here, we're set up, rods are out, we've already had a fish, I had a tiny little huss and uh, my man's had a little uh, um, doggy and we've had some, he's had some bites on his rass rod as well and a little bit of crab bait. So uh, yeah, episode 7, the beach cast probably one of the youngest guests we've had and I mean that respectfully to the other guests that we've had and you know I sort of class myself in that senior bracket but uh, it's nice to have somebody younger who's passionate about the sport so uh, let's meet the man behind the rod Harry Mason how's it going pal not too bad thank you yeah. how are you yeah good mate good good it brought us to a cracking mark fair play um you know you, you studied the weather and the bits of bobs and the wind and you I think you've got a spot on so we, we got a good little spot we're as best out the wind as we can be there's some great water in front of us, I must admit. There's uh, plenty of movement in it and obviously bites straight away from the off. So uh, fingers crossed as the day progresses, maybe we can get into some target species, you know, some husks and maybe that little stray tope. Okay, so let's start off. Um, for the viewers, please tell us who you are and uh, what you do. So my name's uh, Harry Mason. Um, I'm 22 years old um, and I'm a shore angler currently living uh, across the Manor Straits from Anglesey. Um, moved down here four years ago uh, to study marine biology at uh, Bangor University. And uh, that's basically the story of how I got here. Yeah. So you've finished uni now? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, so now you're working in the tackle shop? At the moment, currently, yes. Yeah, so um, this is kind of what we were talking with Gary like yesterday, living the dream, man. It was like, he works in fishing, he does a lot of fishing and you're not dissimilar man it's like you know, briefly from our chat earlier off camera you know someone who's so passionate about the sport and absolutely loves it and what an area to be in to to have that kind of water on your doorstep an island that you know any corner of this island depending on what the weather's doing you're into some cracking fish and the species list is insane 
that's the that's the beauty of Anglesey. There's yeah. always always somewhere to get out the wind. Yeah, always no, somewhere. Phenomenal. I suppose that's the beauty of an island, isn't it? You can go to any particular corner on any given day, and, and certainly get out of it. Now, my research on you was based on your Instagram profile. So you know, I'm looking through what fish, uh, things like that. So your fishing backstory, how did all that begin? Where, where's your love for fishing come from? Well, um, that's quite a long story, to be honest. Um, I think it would have to start back when I was about three or four years old, Ooh. when um, my granddad, who lives um, in Valley on Anglesey, he had a... a that's near the RAF place, yeah? That's correct, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, he had a boat in uh, Holyhead Harbour. Okay. Um, and he used to uh, take me and my mum out fishing when I was, like, four years old. Much to my uh, mum's dismay, she wasn't um, she wasn't a big fan of going out in rough seas, let's say. But oh, anyway. no, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 was, I wasn't bothered, I was you're, loving you're it. You're fine, you're natural sea legs. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm terrible, I am. So, yeah, um, whenever a fish came over the side of the boat, for some reason, I, had, I was always the first one. I just had to be the first one to see it, I don't yeah. know why. Um, and I've always kind of been drawn to water. I don't know why. It's, it's no, just. Do you know what? I think I think I'm just programmed that way. To be do honest. Do you know what? We've probably got quite a lot in common. You know I mean, as a young kid, I had my family nickname the Marine Boy. I taught myself to swim down in Devon. I'd be off for hours on end, rock pooling, and and I'd come back with all sorts of creatures, starfish, and all sorts of crustaceans, and, and they called me Marine Boy. So I exactly know what you mean by you're drawn to water, to anything aquatic. It, yeah, and I, I think that links nicely to why you ended up studying what you did yep that's that's correct i mean if you ask my granddad on my dad's side when we used to go um bike racing with my dad down in tom and i in cardigan bay like my granddad didn't get to watch many of the races because like he had to be down on the beach for me looking around for critters you know so <laughs> <laughs> oh mate no definitely oh i can see where the thing so it was a first class degree in marine biology that's correct where what did you envisage sort of going onwards with that or is the fishing industry more for you or um i don't know really i mean at the moment i kind of just want to enjoy being young for a couple of years now um I like so it. I, like it. I kind of just want to crack on and um you know carry on with my fishing i've got a few things i want to do um in the near future yeah um long term i would like to go back into science um I actually, well, I did my master's in uh, benthic intertidal ecology, so looking at how the intertidal environment yeah. works, how the ecosystem functions. So I am mainly interested in seafloor environments, uh, benthic environments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do, in third year, I specialised in um, benthic shark sensory ecology. So Woo, nice. um, things like your angel sharks. Yeah. Um, things like your bull hus, um Do they wobby. all have Ampuloi Lorenzini? Yes. Now, but the... I had this conversation yesterday, sorry to interrupt you. No, I had this conversation right. yesterday with Gary, right? And I joked, I said, look, I was going to bring what I call, excuse the language, a dildo rig. Because I watched a programme on that. It was in Bimini. And it was on hammerheads, on their sensory thing. And they had this underwater feeding station. There was a chumsicle, all like frozen chopped up fish. There was fresh bait, there was other bits and bobs, and then there was this electrical plate on the floor. Every single one of them went to that electrical plate. Now, I don't know what frequency it is or whatever, but every single shark was attacking that plate. And I'm like, what can we do to our rigs or to our bait to, to trigger that predatory response from their, their senses? So I found Durex Play, which is like a cock ring with a little vibrator in. I thought, well, it's silicon sealed, I don't know if it's got the right pulse, the frequency, or whatever, but I thought, stick that inside a Joey macro, set it off, cast it out, wonder if it works. You never know. If anyone wants to copy it, say copy it, anyone wants to try it, should I say, please do, and let, message me, let me know. I'm going to do it, but I just, you know, the thought of going into Tesco and buying some cock rings, people will be like, oh, hey, having a nice night, are we? But do you think that that would work? I honestly don't see why it wouldn't work if if it's got an electrical current and it's obviously water tr conducts electricity so if well it obviously it, it's not gonna it's gonna get weaker the further it goes from the bay yeah, but yeah. 
generally the fish are going to be following the smell, aren't they? Not the not the electrical current until they get to the bait. Yeah, and then they'll then, target in on it. Then once they're close to the bait, then it might you know make what? a difference. I'm going to try it one day. It might I should, make a difference. I should have brought it this weekend because this is Tope Central up here. I mean, for, yeah, for sure is... caught Tope. This Anglesey is is the one. You know, Gary and Darren yesterday. Then I'm a full week of it, and, yep. and and they're extending it on because the weather's improving. So yeah, crikey. I mean, um, so yeah. So the study-wise, that, that's all done. I do you know you had masters as well. Yeah, that's right. Idea. So I did uh, an integrated master. So uh, in my master's year, I was studying, like I say, benthic intertidal ecology. So I was interested in um, one particular species of crab, which is the brown edible crab, okay. where, uh, commercially important species. Um, so I was looking at how juvenile recruitment in the intertidal environment um, is possibly beneficial to recruitment and population um, size in offshore stocks. So I was sampling size, average size of crabs. I was doing counts along different shore heights, uh, trying to analyse distribution trends. I won't go fully into it. No, no, it no. Was, <laughs> no. I don't know the viewers, but for me, this is massively interesting. I watch anything that's a programme based on things like that. You know, Discovery, Nat Geo Wild, they're all my favourite channels. Now, anyone who watches soap opera, I'm like, no, no, thanks. I love natural history programmes. And, and that's, where, that's where the dildo rig came from, you know, after watching this programme, especially when I'm on night shift, I'll watch a lot of those programmes. And I have seen a programme on intertidal uh, work and things like that, and there were people doing studies. It was more on the smaller crustaceans, you know, the sort of um, shellfish, and, and, uh, whelks and you know, all the stuff that buries itself in sand. But, um, yeah, no, Cricky, we have got a lot in common. All right, let's talk a bit about fishing now. Do you do, okay. do you do most of your fishing on the island, or because you, you actually live off off the island, don't you? I live uh, in Bangor. Bangor. Uh, no, that's where your uni was, isn't it? That's where my uni was. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So most of my fishing is on Anglesey. Um, I do a bit of fishing on the mainland side of the Straits. I do sometimes venture towards Conway uh, to do a bit of flatty fishing on the beaches, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, I do sometimes go down the Clin as well when I go. When, well, well. I'd say go tote fishing when I try and go tote fishing. Um, uh, mate, honestly. Not been very successful the past few weeks. But... It took me 18 months to get my first one. And yeah. I'm, I'm still not great at it. Like the guys yesterday, they're pros, man. They, they, they're smashing them out left, right, and center. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's definitely a worthwhile quarry to go after. And it's very rewarding, but yeah, it can be frustrating at times. So, are you a member of any club or do you fish competitively in any comps or anything? Um. No, to be honest, I've just always sort of kept myself to myself and I, I don't, you know, it's each to their own, but I don't really, I'm not bothered about competitively fishing. No, um, I've never fished a comp ever. For I've me, never you just, been in a club. For me, just going fishing's enough, you know, yeah. so, and a lot of the time it's just for me, like, personal targets, you know, like, this year I wanted Thornback Ray over £10, managed to do that. Nice, uh, nice. Managed my Huss over £10, uh, quite happy with those, and... Um, what else was it? There was another one as well. Oh, I had a few species I wanted to tick off. Uh, Gold Cine Rass managed to do that one as well. So, got that one. Um, so, yeah, I, ju I just like to fish for myself, really, yeah. if that makes sense. And yeah, well, uh, this next one sort of kind of leads into that. So, I know, you know when we've chatted, I know you clash yourselves more of a species hunter than a specimen hunter. And I'm guessing, is that the scientist in you? Probably. Wants to see yeah, all the different yeah, species yeah, and the probably. different genus. Yeah, um, yeah I just, I'm, I'm just so interested in seeing new things, you know. Yeah. And I have a checklist at home of all the species I've caught. There's nothing better than getting I think, it, I think that list would be huge on Anglesey. Because well, of the, the waters that feed into this area, the, the number of fish is just insane. You know, the, the, the count. You know, the, certainly where I'm from, you know, sort of Cardiff Barry area, you know, it's, yeah, there's a great number of fish and there's some great fish in there, but you certainly don't get the species that you do up here. Yeah. You know, it's insane. You know? I mean, if you speak to one of my colleagues at the shop, you know, I, I won't say his name because I don't know if he wants me to, but um, he's amazing at species fishing, like a little LRF fishing. Yeah. He's like won so many competitions See, doing I, that. I need to get into and, LRF. And, like, I went to Amlock Breakwater to get my gold cine wrasse and I think between me and my mate, we had like six or seven species. And I went into work the next day and I said to him, oh yeah, we had six or seven species. He said, you what? 
Six or seven? You should have had like more like fifteen. <laughs> I'd have been buzzing with six or seven. Yeah, <laughs> crikey. He's brilliant at it. He's really good at it. So yeah. kit wise, then, what, what what do you fish with? I know you've brought. Is that the first time out in for the T nine hundred? No, that's right. Yeah, T nine hundred first time out. Oh, Gary, you'd be happy with that. T nine hundred boy, he's got thousands in the bag. And uh, any anyway, fish anywhere? Bass Pro on the you fishing with the Ras? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so since the start really i've always been any fish anywhere yeah um still absolutely love them um any fish anywhere gbfs pro one of my favorite rods if not possibly my favorite don't know we'll probably get onto that later yeah maybe. yeah um six and baits can't go wrong with a six and bait uh, popular, Ama popular rods amazing rod um what else what else have i got i've got two of the original match mark ones the 13 fours okay um, they were my first proper rods that I learnt to properly cast with. Yeah. Um, what else have I got? I've got the Bass Pro. Got a few centuries now as well. So yeah, kit white, but it, it's usually two piece. I don't really use Comte rods. I do occasionally on the beach, but yeah, most of my fishing certainly is, this rock fishing I don't think is Comte territory. Is not it, really, no. I mean, no. I mean, well, you might get away with a Tronics Pro Cobra, but is that the green one? That's the green one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but. I, I certainly wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to take them really rough ground fishing. No, no, like, definitely so. not. Certainly yeah. not. Two piece and multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we were sort of planning and chatting back and forth about this session, uh, you were on about possibly becoming a shore guide on the island. How's that going? Any plans um, moving forward? To be honest, at the moment, I'm just sort of concentrating on learning. Learning. I want to be able to basically consistently go somewhere. Yeah. And and catch what I'm after or do what I need to do. Um, I am quite good at doing that for myself, but obviously when there's a client involved, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, it's a slightly different story. Well, I think I think most clients would be reasonably understanding that it's fishing at the end of the day. You can't guarantee it. Yeah. Nothing's a given in fishing, but you know, having seen your social media profile, I don't think you're going to have any trouble if you do go down that route. I mean, you seem to do really well with your fish and you get some really nice fish as well, not, not just sort of... Uh, you know, average fish, there's some really nice ones on there. You know, that cuckoo rash we had recently. Yeah. Oh, what a beaut. The colours yeah. on that. Problem is with Instagram, though, you don't see all the blanks on there. But, I mean... Oh, crazy. I mean, it, we all do. I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably not... I actually admit I'm not a prolific angler. You know, I mean, look, some of the guys I fish with, you know, certainly the guys yesterday, phenomenal. I mean, uh, and like, I, asked, I think one of the questions I asked Gary yesterday was, you know, what's the secret sauce? You know, what, what's the, he said good bait yeah absolutely good bait time and time again I mean fresh so, bait fresh is best when it comes to tow well, everyone, yeah, certainly. Every, everyone I mean, I've uh, spoken to Darren us. proved that yesterday because in fairness to him he worked his ass off with the feathers and he got quite a few and that's what he had this fish on I mean I had frozen and Gary and I did let me have a few pieces but uh, yeah without a doubt um, so short court records wise Anglesey now I I got to add to this because after Last night we went out for beers and we met um, Marcus uh, Anglesey Fishing Adventures is his Instagram. Um, top bloke. So uh, if you're watching Marcus, how you doing, bud? Um, some of the records that I managed to research. Leopard Spotted Goby. I believe that was Amwop. Yarrell's Blenny. Pipefish. And something called, I don't know if I pronounce this right, Pogue? Poge? P-O-G-G-E. I think it's actually it's a, a Pogue. It's, Pogie, it's uh, Agonus, aka hook nose or armed bullhead. And I looked at the fish, what a cool looking fish. And I'm like, that's what I mean, you know, stuff you can get around here. Have you ever caught any of them? Um, I haven't had, I think I've had pipe fish, but that's the closest yeah. um, out of all those ones. I haven't had any leopard spotters. Like, again, like I say, my colleague will have had, I think, pretty much all of them. I would have said. Um, I mean, half of these I've never heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're not on the sort of uh, South Wales kind of rate. You know, I'm starting to fish West Wales a bit more, and I know, you know, the species you can get down there are greater, but uh, you know, there's certainly some fish I've, I've never really heard of. Um, the one that Marcus told me of last night, because obviously South Wales is renowned as a bit of a ray fishing area. Yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, some of the records for those fish would be South Wales or, you know, a, a low towards Swansea, way. Right? 30-pound blonde. I was like, what? From, what, where did you say the area was? I think, it's, uh, I think it was caught on the lily ponds. 
Well, it's, is a, it's, the, a, it's a mark we call the lily ponds, which is round Trada Bay area. Yeah. How would you pronounce that? Because I thought it was Triave. Uh, Trada. I, that might be my northernness coming out, to be honest. But <laughs> Yeah, because um, I, I was worried, obviously, being a South Walian and a, and a non-Welsh speaker, I was making sure that I got my pronunciations of the areas correct, because people are like, gosh, you're Welsh, you don't even pronounce them properly. So one of the lads I work with, he's a Welsh speaker and his wife's a Welsh teacher. So I checked with him and it's Triavia. And I'm like, okay, so I, hopefully I've got that right. And if I, if I got it wrong, apologies, anyone. So I've been saying it wrong the whole time. Oh, I don't think it matters. Fair you know enough. I mean, it, it, <laughs> if you're, you've spent a lot more time here with the locals, so if they say it like that, then that's the thing. Now, overseas fish, and I know you've done some. Now, I mean, I spotted you've been a foot of Ventura. Yep. Uh, what's it like over there? You know, because obviously the, the Spanish fishing license and bait availability, how did you find it? It's pretty easy, to be honest. Uh, the license is, well, I can't remember the website I did it through, but you basically, you pay an agent to go into oh, right. the license office. So you all do it online and it came in like two weeks. Oh. Just printed it off, laminated it, and I, I think the one I got had five years. Did they ever, have you ever been asked to? Who? I never got asked. No, but, but I know it's uh, yeah, a bit naughty if you do. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely worth getting. It's yeah. not expensive. I think the one, when I first discovered Fort Ventura as, as a fishing place, you know, I've been on holiday there half a dozen times, and the one beach where this guy was fishing, I'd been nudie swimming there, and there's 100 pound stingers in there. I'm like, what the? Um, you know, but he went to some lo- local office, queued up, and then he went to go down the road to go to another office and get it yep. stamped, and then come back, but you can do it online. You can do it online. So oh, you, right. you have got the option to do it when you get there, but like you say, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a pain. Yeah. Um, you lose a day doing it. Oh. So def- if I ever go back over there, I was meant to go this year, but I'm going I'm going elsewhere. I'm going to the Red Sea instead. But um, no, I'm definitely going to do it. If I go back over to the Canaries, I'm definitely having a bit of it. I haven't seen some of the fish because I know it's getting quite popular now as a bit of a sea fishing uh, a venue, and some of the fish, you know, the beautiful, beautiful fish. In terms of getting bait, it's pretty easy. You just go yeah. to the supermarket. All oh, right. And just get it off the counter. Uh, they have um, what was the fish they were catching? Bogies. Bog. You you can get them uh, like down the side of Breakwaters, yeah. just LRF fishing. And they yep. were fishing for them, and then putting them out as bait. Yeah, and brilliant some fresh bait. Fish. Brilliant fresh bait. Um, we did really well on scad, uh, which are just off the fish counter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they can be a bit soft, but if you just freeze them down, just use them when they're frozen. A bit tougher. Uh, yeah, just loads of elastic on there and fish. is it after 7 p.m on some of the beaches i think so yeah, yeah. We, we we only fished the beaches at night um didn't want to get in anybody's way like so no no um but yeah it's, it's certainly very good any more plans to go back over the, that area um so i am going with my colleagues to foot adventure at the end of october Oof. that's for one of our colleagues 50th birthday nice, so man. it'll be a mix of fishing and uh, possibly some drinking Some as well like but, refreshments yeah like refreshments yeah we'll put it that <laughs> way shall we uh yeah um so yeah looking forward to that would be a be a good good lads holiday like so. well definitely you know I mean? uh, otherwise i'd like to go to south africa um because one of my colleagues he guides all over the world the same bronze whalers and yeah. the raggedy tooth uh, and he he's been guiding out there and he shows me some of the pictures and all the stuff they've caught and it's just Mate, like i wow. cannot believe those things are sure caught yeah, yeah, off the beach. Just, <laughs> I know um, one of the South Wales anglers, Mario Aspro, him and his father go over there, and I've seen yeah. some of the pictures of them. Holy, they're massive. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, how the hell? What kit do you use? Sand tiger shark off a beach, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that was me, I'm like, oh, I'm barely twelve stone. I'd be gone. They'd be pulling me in. Like, well, imagine me. I'm nine and a half. <laughs> oh, they'd have to anchor you to the yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, it's hard enough in Fort Ventura. <laughs> Well, I've got a bit of a debate question here now, mainly because you're a marine biologist and that sort of thing. Artificial reefs and marine sanctuary areas, do you think we need some around the UK? Yes. I wanted to start a campaign. I mean, I, I watched a programme on this company, I think it's a UK-based company, who do some sort of eco-cement and make these artificial reefs. They go around the world and obviously the corals and things will populate it and then they see in the, the return of the fish in those areas. And I'm like, I think the UK could do with it. And I don't want to like, you know, put a down on any of the fishing industry or any of the, the guys who make a living from fishing. But we need to have certain zones where we can get a bit of biodiversity back, increase the stocks, and sort of keep 
boats out of that area. Is that anything that well, sort of you ever studied or kind no, of come across? Yeah, no take areas are scientifically proven to be beneficial to stocks in that area. Yeah. Um, so, and if you're trying to preserve, say, an endangered species, then certainly yes, because well, we can take the uh, common skate as a uh, yeah. as a good example, the flapper skate. Um, they used to be abundant all throughout the Irish Sea. Uh, now we only see them, you know, in Scotland, uh, in the deep sea locks. And the, re yeah. the reason being is all the uh, bottom trawling activities in the Irish Sea in the, um, you know, quite a few years back, but that will have had a very detrimental effect on them. Uh, their habitat, and obviously they'll have got caught themselves in yeah, the, in the yeah. gear. Um, but mostly it's the damage to the habitat. Um, yeah. So if you if you create areas where that activity can't take place, it, it becomes a natural yeah, a natural I, system. I'm, I'm a reef keeper you know, and, I, and I, I'm trying to do it in a sustainable way. I'm you know, trying to get UK grown corals and certain fish. And I know Hawaii has set up certain areas where you're not allowed to harvest corals and fish and Know, certain species of fish, yellow tangs, and they're not allowed to come from Hawaii anymore. So people are in it, around the world are cottoning on to this kind of, we need to do something about it kind of attitude. You know, that sort of global warming thing, I think that's a bigger picture. And that, you know, it's probably not for this video. And, uh, you know, we certainly haven't got enough time to go into that in depth. But you know, in terms of UK waters, I, I think we could benefit from it. Because you know, Brexit, I voted out because of the fishing industry. I thought, right, let's get rid of the Spanish and French trawlers, let's get the UK boats back into sort of our waters and, and fishing, and hopefully then the abundance of fish will, will increase because they're not getting hammered by these big factory ships. But uh, no, I think certain areas it needs to. I, I don't know how it happens, I haven't got a scientific brain, but you know, in terms of what can we do as an angling community to sort of help to sort of keep the fish in our waters and the sort of sustainability of our sport really. There's a good example locally, we've got um, down in Cardigan Bay where there's um, a seagrass bed project. Um, so they've basically, it's a, it's a bay that's protected. This was on the Welsh News recently. It would they had be, volunteers yeah. going around yeah, and yeah. I'm sure there was a celebrity in there doing it. They went around with like big sort of sacks and they were trying to like... Yeah, yeah, planting, plant. yeah. planting, yeah. There was a celebrity doing it, I can't remember who it was. It might have been like a chef or some, or an ex-athlete or something it was in there up to like his waist doing it and trying to plant these things. And what where else was, was that? So that's, I'm not entirely sure where it, I know that it's north of Barmouth, I'm pretty sure, but um, one of my fellow students, he was doing a project on seagrass and he was going down there quite, um, quite regularly. Yeah. But that particular area is scientifically interesting because it's an ideal habitat for angel sharks. Ah, so, I know there's a big angel shark project. I know Gareth Griffiths is, is kind of involved, or I've seen him with a, t in the t a t shirt on and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? um, so we have, well, there's the angel shark project Wales, which that's is. That's maybe what it is then. Which is um, concentrating on the uh, conservation of angel sharks in Welsh waters. Yeah. Then you've got, there's a few uh, all around the world. You've got the Canaries, where they've got an established population in the Canaries. Um, there's a few in the Mediterranean as well, uh, slightly different species. Is it globally sharks. endangered then? or uh, The common angel shark, which is the one we get in Welsh waters, is very, very endangered. Critical. Like, critically endangered, oh, yeah. Crikey. Um, you, you, we hear of like one or two getting caught down in Cardigan Bay every year, but that's it. Uh, it's like one or I'm two a year. I'm guessing catch and release. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, like yeah. accidental bycatch. You know, when uh, down there it's fishing for tow, and people do catch them while they're fishing for tow yeah. occasionally, very occasionally. Okay. Um, but there's a reporting um, system through the Angel Shark Project's website. Of so, where you had them. Yeah, where you caught them, what size yeah. they were. Um, so, but yeah, I know that they, I know the anglers treat them with very high respect which of okay. course is very necessary so okay mate well let's bang on to the rapid 10 section because i know you know you're waiting to get that rasp rod back out no that's all right he's itching to no get into us. see if we can get another cuckoo or something like that but uh, right start off with a student based question now a bit daft right after a boozy night out 
Which pot noodle are you having? Beef and tomato. Beef and tomato? No, I'm a mu- uh, chicken and mushroom. No, be- beef and tomato. But it's got to be on a sandwich. What? Yeah. See, it's students that we were watching, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically, you don't put as much water in there, so it's, like, really sticky. Yeah. And then you you put it, it's probably, again, my northernness coming out, but you, you put it on a butter. <laughs> Okay. It's like having a pie That's a new one on me. It's like having a pie butty Pop as well. noodle Linda McCartney sausages when I was in uni. Mainly because they were cheap. Yeah. Well, uh, well, for me, I've basically lived on jacket potatoes for four years because they're cheap. <laughs> yeah. Jacket potatoes and beans. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 I do like jacket potato and beans. Can't beat it. Well, if my wife's watching this, she'll know it. Jacket potato and beans. Well, jacket potato and coleslaw. Bit of, bit of curry powder in beans. Oh, dirty boy. <laughs> so, right, yesterday I fished with Gary Pye. Yep. He's living the dream, man. Manages a fishing shop, fishes all around the country. Don't get me wrong, he's a top angler, and, and obviously he's involved with Century Rods um, designing and uh, production and sort of uh, you know, new product development as such. Um, Ian, he's always out fishing. You know, talking about living the dream. What's Harry's dream? Um, I would like to work abroad at some point. Um, I'd certainly love to. Uh, like I was saying before, one of my interests in third year was Benthic Shark Sensory Ecology. Yeah. Um, one of the things I decided that I kind of want to try and do in my life is create a more positive future for sharks in the best way that I can. Um, you know, sharks have been around, you know, pretty much just as long as any any oh. complex life. Uh, I think 400 million years. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, so you you probably watch programs with mean, his name Andy Castellano. Yeah, who goes uh, on all these things and goes diving with them, and I'm like, yep. the guy is nuts. He's like down there with white tips, um, reef sharks, and oceanic ones, and I'm like, oh my God, the things are bigger than him. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we took them, and they come back up out of the water, they're buzzing. He absolutely loves it. But yeah, he's he's that that way inclined of very much trying to educate people that you know what sharks are about and you know how we need to look after them. It it, it constantly makes me quite sad to be honest when I think about sharks because we've no, been, go, I know where you're going with this we've been around for shark what? fin soup and we've been around for oriental what? medicine two million years they've been around for 400 million years and we've managed to wipe them out pretty much yeah which is just awful yeah <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I'm with you and I mean that's why I said we've got a lot in common that I'm absolutely obsessed with all things aquatic um Right, before we get too deep, let's, let's just... Yeah, no, let's, let's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Let's go fishing. What's the one rig that's brought you the most success? Pulley rig. Pulley? Pulley rig. Yeah, no. Three, I... three foot pulley with six O's on. Six O's? Six O's. Oh, mind you, you have the big stuff around here, ain't you? Six O's, I Big use. fish. Yeah. All right, funniest, strangest, or best thing you've seen while fishing? It's a common question to ask because they do get some really cool answers. I, I know which one this is going to be. Um, so my friend who comes fishing with me quite a lot, he's called, he, I, he doesn't mind me saying his name, he's called Alistair. And he is a lovely lad, uh, turned into a very good angler. Okay. Uh, but he has very bad foot coordination, let's say. And um, we were walking down to a mark. A clumsy sod like me then. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. we were walking down to a mark called White Beach. This particular day, it was quite slippy, and I think he fell over six times on the way down. So that sounds like me. It, it, I need to meet Alistair. I think we, it, we get on. Yeah, he'll it, it'll be sat at home laughing when he's watching this. But yeah, it's uh, it was rather entertaining, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Now, I love cephalopods. I mean, for the viewers, that's octopus, squid, cuttle, things like that. Yep. Now, I think they're the most fascinating, smart, intelligent creatures out there. If you were ever reincarnated, as an animal, and I'm guessing it's going to be aquatic. What would you choose? Angel shark. Angel shark. Huh? Yeah. Are they, You're probably uh, getting that I like angel sharks. Yeah. I do. I love them. Are they? They. I suppose they're apex. Kind of. What I love. What I love about them is they're just perfectly adapted to how they live. Yeah. And their sensory organs, like I say, I studied their sensory organ composition, and they're just beautifully adapted yeah. to how they live, which is just sit on the seafloor, buried in the sand completely invisible and just wait for something to swim overhead and like the wo- is it wobby gong is it similar to a wobby gong yeah, yeah. And like, so they're um, they're bonkers they're a vertical uh ambush predator so whoop, yeah. yeah and then they do they use the water to, yeah to, so <laughs> so it's um yeah so when they open the mouth it creates a vortex yeah. uh, a suction effect so basically 
they don't actually grab they use the suction to pull the fish into the mouth. It just goes in then they, hole. Then they yeah. grab it, yeah. So yeah, they're, no, just, no. they're just gorgeous. They're, they're beautiful animals. Okay, right, off-piste. World's best biscuit, what are we saying? Chocolate obnob. Is the Jaffa cake actually a biscuit? No. It's a cake? Yeah, you, you can't dunk a Jaffa cake in your brew, can you? You can, but I, I think know. it's going to be a bit of a soggy mess. Yeah, and your brew's going to end up tasting orange. Yeah, no, no. Chocolate obnob, yeah, I'd go with that. You can, a, you, that's a good bicky. The thing is, with an obnob, you can dunk it as many times as you want, it's not going to fall apart. See, Aldi or Lidl do a uh, Oaties. Yeah, it's Oaties. Very similar, yeah, yeah, yeah. but a third of the price. Yeah, I'd so buy you can, them. So you can snaffle a packet of them without feeling guilty. Yeah, you know, 80p, 80 you're like happy days. Yeah. No, all right, I'll, I'll go with that. Obnob or OT. Yeah. Right then. Because you're a scientific kind of guy, weather, moon phase, air pressure, any of these factor in your planning? Yeah, massively. Um, I'm always keeping an eye on wind forecast. I, most of my fishing is planned in accordance with wind. Yeah. And then okay, I'll, look at, I'll, look at, I'll look at the weather a few days before. I do keep an eye on tide size, uh, swells, all that kind of yeah. stuff. I always find the best of the fishing is just after the new moon. Uh, uh, see, I'm getting somewhere now because I've asked this to a few people, right? And there are anglers out there who, who do pay attention to moon phase and air pressure. It's never been anything I've particularly done because you know I'm not that good an angler, and clearly that's probably why I don't pay attention to those sort of things. The standard ones, you know, wind, tide, swell. Yeah, that's that's you know most people generally look at that and choose a mark appropriate for conditions. But I'm interested to learn more about moon phase air pressure because corals in particular, that annual spawning event, yep. is triggered by a moon phase. Uh, absolutely. Or yep. water temperature yep. or, or, or something like that. You know, well, I, it's I usually think it's, a combination. Yeah, you know, some, something across that entire reef triggers it. So I'm thinking fish have got to be something similar. There's something yep. in the lunar cycle or air pressure that like, right, I'm going to go on the feed. I'm going to munch it. You, you, you got to think as well that like, it's not all to do with the fish. It's to do with what they're feeding on. So what are they doing? What's the prey doing in yep. accordance with the moon phase? You know, are they coming in shallow to feed on, on, or spawn on, or, on, mate or, or spawn yeah. or you know? Yeah. So it, it's there's always a bigger picture when you look at it. Yeah, in science. You, can, um, you can go really deep with this, can yeah, you? In you terms can. of yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know what are they feeding on and what are they feeding yeah. on, and then and the big boys are coming in to eat them. Yeah, yeah. okay. We won't go too deep into no, it. No, no, um, no. And I mean, p people are probably that. Oh my god, mate. I, I could talk for right. hours, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm interested. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a case of where everyone else at home is. Um, your all-time PB, uh, probably the round stingray I caught in Fuerteventura, which was probably over 300, I think. Because yeah. you, you measure them and then do an estimation. Yeah, it, 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 it might not just have made 300. What, it was what, well what was that? Is that a rough tail? Or a, it was what? a round, uh, a round stingray. Uh, so, yeah, it was a bit of a pain in the backside to get to the beach. It yeah. took three hours. I was sat 20 yards out for like an hour. So what, you're just leaning into it and just... Yeah, there's not it. a lot you can do to be honest. Like, yes, you're using 80 pound braid and you yeah. know strong leaders and strong rigs, but you know at the end of the day, I wasn't strong. I wasn't physically strong enough to move it. No, so 300 pound. I don't think most people are. I mean, if that fish wants to go, he's going. Yeah, if, and they just act like a big suction cup. Yeah, and we went to on that bottom. Uh, but yeah, that's probably all time. Yeah. Probably. Uh, that, that's pretty impressive, mate. I, I must admit, I, I got anything anywhere close as that. So I'm not even going to tell you what. I do want that tote though. That's uh, it's a well, bit of a bugbear for me at the moment. You can but. go after Mario's 82, which is yeah. just that's just that's bonkers. I think I'd rather a nice easy 30. Yeah, no, get yeah. To that, to be get honest. yourself started. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Other than Spooligan, of course. Yep. Favorite YouTube channel? Can I have two? Go you have as many as you want. So I really like uh, Full Circle Angling. Yes, I'm sure his name's David Craig. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good production quality in his thing. Great fishing. Yeah. Uh, I've done a bit. My name's Craig David. I've turned Gary about that, Chester, because he's obviously up that way. Yeah. Full Circle Angling. I'm with you on that. I've done a bit of fishing up there, and and I like it up there. It's yeah. ace. Um, the other one's probably VML. Yeah. I, uh, I love watching the videos from South Wales and. And obviously yeah, your videos, yeah, Dean, um, 
Dean Booker's rigs are absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, no, I don't I don't bother. He's Dean's meticulous with his, his rig tying. I don't bother tying tote rigs. I just buy Booker's. I do all my other ones, yeah. but no, like, no, he, he's you can't go far wrong with Dean's rigs. I would always policy. trust Dean's rigs. They're, no, they're mate, amazing. He's he's attention to detail is phenomenal. Oh yeah, fantastic, yeah. Right. Ultimate kit out, unlimited budget, what are we buying? The problem I've got here is I've sort of... Probably got half of it yeah, already. Yeah, I've sort of... Um, Which your dad probably doesn't know about. He's, no, he's, dad... He's at home no. like, how much you spent? He, he don't want to know. <laughs> He'll probably ring me straight afterwards, but anyway. Yeah. Um, probably another GBFS Pro and another Aerotechnium. Probably. That's big bucks, mate. So I had a... If I had... Because I've got a GBFS and a Technium. Yeah. So I made another GBFS and a Technium. Uh, or um, a bullseye, another bullseye. Uh, not so much the rod, but the reel, I'm 100% with you on that. They are the, Some of the boys have had the Technium, and honestly, it's exquisite bits as of a, kit. As a casting reel, it, it's not even funny. Like, with 60 pound braid on one of those pulls, I can't believe how far it goes. Yeah. Like, well, you, you barely have... Gary and uh, Darren yesterday. All right, it was quite awkward casting, but with braid, they can chuck them. I yeah. Mean, it, it was fair play, and Shimano reels. You barely have to touch. Uh, you yeah. barely have to touch it. I mean, the Power Arrow is, oh. for the money, an amazing reel. Yeah. Uh, well, I went from Surf Blasters to XSEs to the Power Arrow. XSEs Arrows. are good. Yeah, I had a okay. pair of them. Yeah, I got. I still got the pair of them. Then they're brilliant. But different level Power Arrow and then Techniums. Bullseyes are good as well. Uh, yeah, I find them quite heavy though. Quite a talky reel. Yeah. Uh, Good in foot adventure, very good in foot adventure. Yeah, it's uh, big, big boy fish. Well, I've got Saragossas for that, so. <laughs> yeah, Dad, if you're listening, he was joking, he hasn't got expensive reels like that. All right, mate, well, let's get on with some fishing. It's been yep. a blast chatting with you. I Absolutely. appreciate you taking the day off work as well to come and fish. No with problem me. at all. You know what I mean, I don't want you to lose out on money and things like that, but uh, nope. we're on the rocks, we're in the sunshine rather than the rain of yesterday, so uh, let's hopefully we get ourselves into the fish. Uh, I'm going to have a bite to eat and a drink and see if my dog's still there. So uh, let's go, mate. Thank you. Yeah, we're getting towards the end of our session now. Um, last cast are out. I've chucked a whole joey in the bay in, in short here, just as a little speculative uh, chuck, just to see if there's anything uh, lurking. It's very deep water. I um, mean, you can see like the angle of the lines are going right down, but uh, yeah, Harry's been battling with some wrasse. 
Um, he managed to land that one, as, uh, which you've seen on camera, and a few of them have snapped him off. So uh, he's having some fun with them, but uh, you know what ras fishing is like, so it's a bit of a battle. But uh, great place, really enjoyed it. We've seen porpoise, seals, cormorants. So yeah, it's quite a uh, rich sort of marine life here. Uh, fantastic. So, uh, yep, dog's hungry. So we'll get her back and give her some tea, and then I'm going to head home tonight. I was going to stay the night, but... Uh, I'm going to hit the road because I haven't even started packing for holiday yet and I'm going to leave someday. So, uh, yeah, let's get on the road. Uh, I've had a fantastic time and I'm slightly in love with Angles here, I must admit. Beautiful, beautiful island. Um, definitely come back, I think. Definitely. It's uh, a very, very nice place to fish and some, uh, some great people I've met and some future stuff planned with the people I've met. So, uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic trip. I've really enjoyed myself met some real characters uh you know gary and darren and uh marcus last night over a few beers we had a good giggle so uh yeah it's been good so uh obviously you'll watch this once i'm back from holiday but uh until then see you on the next one thank you very much